Howdy, I'm Fiddlin' Ray. Welcome to the Fiddle Dojo. Um, I'm in a cowboy hat, and I've got a, a nice western shirt on. At least I think it's nice. It's super comfy, at the very least. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about some western swing. Um, I have a couple other videos that should be floating around somewhere on my channel. Um, Faded Love and Maiden's Prayer, also Bob Will's tunes. Um, but uh, I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I'm, I'm planning on doing multiple videos on each tune. You know, a simple and a more advanced you know, way to spice it up, to fiddle it up, in um, other words. But I figured on this one, I would I would do it a little bit different. i do it backwards. I'm actually going to start um, just with some double stops. So if you're looking to work on double stops, this tune is a great place to start. It's called San Antonio Rose. So one thing you'll hear that's a little different, um, sometimes it might sound like I'm going to go to some place and then I just don't go there, um, is it's because this tune is often played in several different keys at once, meaning that we'll, and Bob Wills did this a lot, he would start the tune off in one key because it was easy to play the fiddle, you know, that's where the fiddles or whatever particular instrument that was um, playing the lead at that point um, sounds best in. But uh, that's not always the best key to sing it in. So at some point, you know, they would uh, they would modulate it to another key. Um, this tune, um, the first two, there's three parts. The first two parts are in the key of D, um, and then we kind of go to the key of A for the third part. Um, however, the whole tune version of the tune that I'm going to teach is technically considered. You could say that it's in the key of D. Because um, even though we're going to the key of A for a minute, we come right back to D. Um, so the first part, let me switch over. Let me switch my camera over. So we're going to start. Get a good camera angle there. So I'm going to start at open A and E. And then... F sharp D and sliding up to F sharp and A and back. Um, and if you're new to double stops, um, you might want to just stop here, you know, and just do this. It's a very fun thing to do, and it's a very uh, common thing that you'll hear um, a lot of the old timers play. Right, and then we end on this open E again. That's E, triple it, F, D. And then it's the same kind of thing over on our A and D string. So we get that triplet thing. And then we slide back down and then but we it goes to an E chord. So I'm gonna play 
E and B there. Um, I'll play all of that up to that point. And then it's going to go to an A chord. So that's... So that's E and C sharp. C, D. And then we do the same thing again. Starts out the same way. And then it's a little different. Or at least it can be a little different. I like to play it that way. So, you know, so this is B and this is D. Same thing as before. But instead of just sliding back down, we're going to kind of. It's important to hear that. Oh, both, all of those, you know, pairs. All right, so I'm sliding back two half steps, both fingers, and then we're gonna land on an E double stop, G sharp, and B, because again, that's that E chord we went to before. Oops. Uh, That's our whole first part. Oops. You could do that a couple different ways. I just did it a little different. That takes us to the second part. So it's kind of a, a double stop E arpeggio, a D on the bottom with my little finger on my G string. Just realized I'm using my five string today, so don't let this extra string confuse you. I'm actually I'm on the G string and the D string. So that's D F a, F sharp A and then A and D. A and then. And so that's G and B. E again, this is roughly the same thing, it's just kind of a different ver version of our first part. That part's the same from the first part. And then we could do all of that again. But, and then, you know, just end it the same way we ended the last phrase of the first part. But I like to do this, right? So instead of playing, we do this. So it's kind of a bow rock, so D on the bottom, F sharp, A, F sharp, and back, and then D on the bottom, G on the top, or yeah, for the first pair, and then G on the bottom, B on the top for the next pair, and then we go to that E chord, right, so my pinky's going to stay where it is on that D, my first finger is going to stay where it is on that B and the only thing that's going to change is my third finger it's going to slide from G to G sharp right it's a B7 chord and right now it's out of tune doesn't really sound that great but it's it, that it's that way for a purpose because it's kind of we're creating tension to take us to this A chord
So let me just play all of what we've done so far. So here's the first part. Second part. just played it I did play it a little bit different there I instead of playing I replaced that E on the bottom with this A which is fun um, so either way is fine um, and I recommend um, learning it both ways but those are the first two parts um, now we're to the third part and this is where we go to the key of A so we're gonna go to an A chord and we're gonna jump all the way up to third position our top note is gonna be E with our second finger I recommend using your open E string to check that note and then we're gonna have a C sharp with our little finger on the bottom um, now it's taken me a long time. This takes a lot of strength, right? So you might, when, if you're new to this, you might feel it in this muscle right here. And if that, you know, if that's the case, then um, that's absolutely fine. That's really normal. Oops! Don't drop the bow. Um, that's actually gonna go out to my friend Leanna, who I just had a, a really long uh, conversation about dropping the bow. So hope she's well if she's watching this. Um, but anyways, yeah, so C sharp and E. And then we slide back a half step. And then back. And then that's D on the top and B on the bottom. Kind of like a G chord. And then we're going to slide back to... That's A with my third finger and C sharp with my first. Okay, and that's that's tricky. At least it is for most people. You might be really good at this. I hope you are. And now we're going to go to an E chord. And it's going to be the same kind of thing, but we're back to first position. E with our pinky, G sharp with our second. Right, so da, da, and then back a half step. And then landing on a D chord, you know. Um, although this is interesting, I'm pretty sure. We're playing a D chord on the fiddle, but the, uh, the chords to the song were still um, we're playing that still over like an E7 chord. So once you got that, it does it. It does that again. C sharp E, A C sharp, C sharp E. Uh, so that's the first half of the second part. We'll go back to where we started that. It's all the same. And now, what do we do? We go back to the first part. You saw I just combined the you know 
part of the first part, part of the second part. They actually are the same. They have the same chordal structure. So you can kind of in, uh, you know, intermix those variations as long as um, you're kind of being respectful to the melody. But uh, yeah, that's the whole tune. I, I'm seeing um, up over 15 minutes, so I hope that's a, um, a good amount for you to chew on. Uh, great job. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where to leave them in the comment section, and please subscribe. Have a wonderful day.